This week, we're going to talk about puppets. That's it, you guessed it. We're doing puppetry this week and how we can tell stories through our puppets. I'm going to put this back on my feet now because it smells a little bit. Bye. <laughs> So, the first rule of puppetry is that we need to make sure that our bodies are really warmed up because we're going to probably find that we're going to be in very uncomfortable positions for a very long period of time. So, it's really important that we get everything nice and loose so we're going to start off with a nice bit of stretching. So, can we, first of all, we're not going to warm our faces today because we don't want to be distracting to the puppet. So, we're just going to warm up our bodies. So, first of all, let's warm up our wrists because this is going to be the main thing that we're using. So, give them a nice stretch back like this. So pull your hand back, get a nice big stretch. And the other one. Good. I can hear honey and Joe clicking behind me. <laughs> Brilliant. So nice roll of the shoulders as well. So we're going to go roll, 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 and forward. Roll, roll. Good. And arms as well. Two, three, four, five. And forward. One, two, three, four, five. Good. And now let's see if we can go both ways. And one, two, three. Four, five, are they doing it? I don't know. And the other way, one, two, three, four, five. Get a bit of one of them, isn't it? So you've got to do your rolling it. Yeah. Which is very much like puppetry because it's all a bit of multitasking. So, now that our bodies are nice and warmed up, we're going to start with a little game. Now, most of you know this, it's Simon Says, but we're going to play it with Nick Says, okay? So, let's have a go. Nick Says, run around on the spot. Nick Says, stop. Nick says, touch your toes. Good, and touch the ceiling. Very good. Well done, and touch the ceiling. Good, run on the spot. Uh, Nick says, run on the spot. Good, Nick says, star jumps. Good, Nick says, uh, touch your knees whilst you're jumping. Jump, jump. Good, Nick says, stop. Good, Nick says, do a wave. And Nick says, do another wave. Good, and rub your faces. Got them both, got them both. Did you do it at home? I think you did. Good, excellent stuff. Well done, guys. So now our brains are switched on. This is really important that we focus. So we're going to do a nice breathing exercise. Breathing really comes into puppetry because when we breathe with our puppet, it becomes alive, which we'll find out a little bit later on. So, if we can just breathe in for 10 as reaching up. Let's go. And one, two. Breathing in. Three, four, five. Keep reaching. Six. Seven, eight, breathing in, nine, ten, hold the breath, and a big ha to lean out. So we're going to drop down and a big ha to let the breath out, and ha. Good, just shake your feet while you're down there. You can vocalise it as well, guys. So, good, and breathe in for ten again, and in, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, and let the breath out again on a big ha, 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 good, excellent. Brilliant, so now that we're all warmed up with our bodies and our breathing and we're nice and focused, we're going to take a sheet of newspaper. Okay, now this is how we're going to make our puppets. You can do this for something at home, if you've got a nice teddy you want to use, or if you've got, uh, I don't know, a sock puppet that you want to use, or even if you have your own puppet, brilliant. But we're going to do it with a bit of newspaper. Uh, and if you can find any bit of paper, don't rip up your mum's books or something, just a nice bit of newspaper. So we're going to just screw it up, like this, and whatever form you've created, that is now going to be your puppet. Excellent. So now you've got your form of a puppet, you can make little adjustments and give it some feet if you want, or you can give it some hands, whatever you like. But we don't want to make it too obviously a character, because it's, it's much more interesting to create life out of something that doesn't really look like life. And we're going to explain how we do that. So, once you've got your puppet form, you're then going to think of a name. So, think of a name for your puppet. Mine's going to be Gertrude. This is Gertrude. 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 This is Brian. Brian. And this is Jeremy. Brilliant. Gertrude, Brian and Jeremy are our puppets. So, the next thing what I want to do is now you've got a name for your puppet, is think about the way it moves. Brilliant. So now that you've got your puppet's form, I want you to have a look at it. So try and find the different features that it has. So for me, Gertrude would probably have her face about here. Um, we've got these nice wings here as well. So this could be a nice place that we use to move with. 
okay? And Gertrude just has the one leg, okay? So maybe she's a bouncer. So there's many different ways of moving with our puppet, okay? We've got, uh, we can slide with our puppet, so it can slide across the surface like this. Just gives it a bit of a kind of ghostly-like movement. You've got, again, bouncing, so you can have a big bounce. It can be fast bouncing like this. Uh, another one you can have is running, so you can use your other hand for this as well. Obviously making sure that you're always paying attention to the puppet and watching the puppet whilst you're doing it. So running, I could use the other hand and just go, ah, ah, like this. So you're just flicking forward and backwards. That'll create a running. Also, does your puppet only move when it's speaking? Now that's a really interesting question. So the next thing we want to do is probably give our puppet a voice. Okay. So remembering not to have too many erratic movements when we're doing it, otherwise it becomes a bit lifeless, okay? So we want to keep it really as still as possible with our movements and give it a voice. Now I've decided with Gertrude, because she's got these lovely wings here, that we're going to go for really big bounces and really nice slow movements like this. So the type of voice that I'd want for Gertrude to have would be probably quite a slow voice to match her slow movement. So, even though it's a female Gertrude, I'm going to give her a very low voice and a very kind of slow voice. A bit like a slow motion capture. So we're going to go... Good morning, everybody. I didn't see you there. Okay, brilliant. So now we've given our puppet a movement and we've given it a voice and we've given it a name. The next thing we want to look at is the breath control of the puppet. Which ties back into before when we were doing our breath control counting to ten. Okay, making sure we've got that focus and attention on the puppet. So, with the breathing of Gertrude, because she moves very slowly, my breath control for this would also be quite slow. So, breathing in slowly and... Okay, so make it a vocalised breath so you can hear it because it's going to help you listen to the wave and the sound of the movement of the puppet. Now if your puppet does move quite fast, again trying to be careful not to have it too erratic, and if it's moving quite fast like this, maybe short sharp breaths like okay, that brings it to life again. All right, so we don't want it to be too robotic and lifeless without the breath, so bring in that breath control. Excellent. And the final thing is now we've got all of these foundations together. We want to think about the status of our puppet and where it wants to go. So, the reason it's moving from A to B, okay? And we can do this by playing a different scene. So, mine, for example, is I want to get with Gertrude off the edge of this table because down there is a really shiny golden egg that I can collect, okay? So, if I want to do that, I'd probably start with a little look. Okay, so this ties in the eye line. So we need to make sure our eye line is always focused. So, if our eye line is facing back here, again, it's like being on stage where we turn our back to the audience, therefore the audience won't be interested in the puppet anymore. So if I'm looking, making sure I'm facing towards the camera and, and just knowing that's where the eye line is, then you're feeling connected to my puppet already. Left and right movements are really nice as well, okay? So, if I wanted to go down here, I'd probably start off with a bit of a movement. So. And then, maybe just looking where I need to go. So you need to change your body position for this. Looking down, you can use the other hand again. Seeing what's down there, lifting up. Hmm. Aha. Oh. Oh. Hmm. So my eye line's moved a little bit to the left here because my puppet's crumpled up a little bit. So what I want to do is just change my position of where I am so I can actually angle myself around the puppet. So I never feel afraid to move as long as it's not distracting. Okay, so once we've got to here, we can look down. Another idea might be to cling onto the edge and use its wing to swivel over. And then from there, we can do a big breath before our movement. <gasps> and move down to get the golden egg. You can't see down there, so I've stopped filming. Brilliant stuff, guys. So we've got a lot of foundations of puppetry there. Main rules, again, just making sure that we're paying focus to the puppet the whole time, okay? Not being lifeless like it is now, and making sure we're breathing before movements, during movements, and giving ourselves an objective of where the puppet needs to go. 
So, some examples of puppetry that's been used in TV and film before is Yoda. So, if you take the first three Star Wars films, Yoda was a puppet. And for the next three Star Wars films, they decided to make him a CGI, like we were talking about with the motion capture. Now, the fans didn't like this because they found that the puppet in the first three films brought Yoda to life and you could really connect with the character. So, in The Mandalorian, they decided to bring Baby Yoda back as a puppet and it just worked 10 times better. So that's one example. Another example in theater is War Horse. So that took three different actors to control that horse. One that was controlling the head and two were controlling the body. So even then you're using a team of actors to create one living thing, which is even harder. So you need to work together as a team. Again, getting that breath control and getting the movement of the island of the head to work together. Lots of different complicated things, but I'm sure you guys will work it out. Anyway, it's been really lovely. I'll see you all next week.